This is the interview show. The Unowebs interview show. Hi. Welcome to the Unilabs interview show. Thank you for having me. Wow. Did you? I got a piano. I see that. Bet you didn't know I could play like a pianist. <laughs> no, I did not know that. Well, now the whole world will know. Thank <laughs> you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. I um I hear I hear tell from uh from a little moose friend that you're uh to the north of me. A little bit, yeah. Where are you located? Uh north of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We're Saskatoon. in the middle of Saskatoon. So is that like the farthest portion of Canada, like the northernest portion of Canada? Oh, no, not even close. We're like midway up the province, and then there's the Northwest Territories above us. What is Santa Claus up to this time of year? <laughs> Trying to stay warm, probably. How cold? It's cold, right? How cold it's is it? It's cold. It was minus 40 when I woke up this morning. How, okay. how does that work? Because, all right, first of all, you are an author. You're not just some, you're not just some Canadian that I invited on I'm the show. Some <laughs> random internet weirdo. Yeah. Everyone, everyone. Essie Jensen is definitely an author. She's published a book. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But there's some serious business I need to get taken care of when it comes to keeping warm in negative forty degree weather. So with that, how do you like? What happens to to a human being when you go outside in negative forty? It's like being on the moon. Please. It is. I'm sorry. I have like a poor connection here. It's uh, you just try not to go outside in minus 40 as much as you can. But if you have to cover up and any any exposed skin can freeze in like less than a minute. Really? Is that have do you have frostbite anywhere? Not not currently. No. <laughs> you don't have like the a tip of my nose hurt when I was walking into the building, though. Really? Gosh, man, that's. It's a dangerous place to live. It's like every day is like trying to survive. Well, inside under the blankets with tea and coffee. Okay, so but the heating, the heating systems up there have got to be like, and I mean they've got to be top notch. You must have some of the best heating and air people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In all the world, we have a new furnace. That's all that I know. Okay, I just it just blows my mind when I hear of anybody from anywhere besides where I'm from. <laughs> it's like it's talking to an alien, you know, oh, in a good way, in a good way, We're reaching out. Um, speaking of aliens, you you write sci-fi. I do, yeah. Not, so. not with your standard aliens, but I do uh, write uh, science fiction and speculative fiction. Okay, so what uh, you said you've published the book, right? What, what's the name of the book? Yeah. Um, so my first novel came out in 2014. Uh, it's called The Timekeeper's War, um, and it was put out by uh, Bedlam Press, which is a, um, an imprint of uh, Necro Publications, which um, I think is based out of Florida, actually. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> is that what you said? Sorry, <laughs> my audio is cutting out. Of course. Oh, that's okay. No, I didn't say anything. Oh. <laughs> Florida's great, though. You should you should check it out. <laughs> I would love to. It sounds warm. So you got published in 2014. Did you go through the querying process and all that kind of stuff, or how'd you go about getting? Yeah, published? I did, and I actually, um, if you search way into the depths of my blog, I talked about it a little bit back when I was when I was working on it. Um, and yeah, I, I had it. It was uh, it was a long slog. I um, 
queried, it seemed like endless agents and, and publishers and uh, was getting, I was getting a lot of, um, a lot of bites where they would ask to see a little bit more, like after I sent the initial query and, and synopsis, then they would ask to see the first 10 pages and then um, 20 pages, 50 pages. And I got all the way to sending the whole manuscript a couple of times, um, which was really encouraging, but in the end, uh, nobody was taking it. And um, and I, they never give you any feedback. You just eventually get this form letter that says, you know, it's just not right for us at this time or whatever. So I didn't really know what I was doing wrong. Um, and then when I sent my manuscript to uh, Bedlam, the editor there um, actually got back to me and gave me some uh, some real feedback about what the problem was. And um, he said, like, um, you know, it's a great story. Your writing is great, but the pacing is just not um, it's just not fast enough for for our market. Um, and he said, if I if I reworked it and and uh, you know increased the pacing and kind of cut out a lot of the world building and descriptions and and that kind of thing, um, that he'd like to see it again. And so I went back and I ended up cutting about fifty thousand words from my original manuscript and uh, completely right. restructured it. Yeah, it was it was a big. I, I was originally at like one hundred and seventy thousand words, which is huge for a first novel. I now realize. Um, yeah. So it ended up coming in at just under. Just under 120, I think. Um, but are you there? Yeah, sorry, cut out. <laughs> I don't have a great signal in here now that I'm on my I'm laptop. Not... Sorry about that, everybody who's watching this around the world and the universe and aliens. This <laughs> I'll have to try and edit it, but <laughs> I probably I probably won't be able to. <laughs> it's not my style. That's a uh... no, because I, everybody I've talked to is like completely the opposite they i mean I know. it's like such a headache and i know for i hate editing it, editing anything too it's like i have to edit videos now too along with writing and it's just like such a pain in the butt i mean it can be cool don't get me wrong i made an awesome montage video earlier <laughs> did you <laughs> yeah it's pretty amazing <laughs> but like how do you all right so you talk about magic and editing what do you? What the heck are you talking about? What's wrong? <laughs> Where you, is this man? Been drinking. Um, what are you talking about? A lot of my, um, I think maybe the difference is that the the thing that I like most about writing and about the creative process tends to be um, the more abstract things like um, imagery and and theme and that kind of thing, and the the plot. Um, is is secondary to that for me and I think that's where the action of writing drafts is it's getting from like A to B to C and like getting your character through all of these situations and the yeah. part that I like um, is after that basic structure is there I like to go back into those scenes and then flesh them out I like to like to pay attention to a particular um, sensory information or like if this character is um, you know, experiencing a, a certain taste or sound or whatever, and something that's important. You don't just like fill in a bunch of random descriptions of things, but uh, when you you pick out those key moments, and then you really dive into the the just the physicality of it, and and that's the part that I really like. So for me, the drafting is the basic structure, and just getting all of the nitty gritty what's happening down, and then in the editing is when I go in and I add the more artistic side of it. And I get to focus on on the imagery and that kind of thing. Well, OK, and that, that makes sense because I, there have been times when I've written stuff and like in the first draft of writing it and I'm like, I write a scene and I'm like, this scene could be really cool I, if I added some more to it or if I, but then I'm just like, nah. If I, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> That's where I go in there and I, you know, spend hours uh, building up this this scene. Right. And that's, I mean, that's, that's good. Is that so you you do this in your blogging too is that why it takes you so long to blog <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> yeah actually it is no i i um i don't know i come from an academic uh background i guess um yeah I've and got so schooling I, think about, I think a lot about uh the overall like every sentence i would like it to connect to the next sentence and i you know my paragraphs are I like to be tackling one idea at a time and um, there is an overall, um, I don't know, concept, I guess, and a, and a way that I'm trying to 
trying to get through it. So yeah, I don't just like sit down and, and type out a bunch of stuff and then hit publish. Like I, it usually takes me a couple of hours to, to get through. I know like, people who do that are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I really appreciate that people can that that people can can do that. I've actually I've often been uh, extremely jealous of people who can sit down and, and write, you know, a novel in three months or, you know, whatever, even if it's just a basic thing, because I can't like I can't do that. I can even when I try to relax my brain. Do you I, know anybody like that? By chance, <laughs> perhaps you. <laughs> you haven't you haven't read the novel, so you don't. It's probably crap. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be jealous after all. No, yeah. I, the writing community just get the draft done. Um, don't worry about whether or not it's bad writing. Just get it out and then work on it which I we, tried we to cut do. Out we cut out a little bit. So after um, you said my novel was crap, uh, <laughs> you were, it was, <laughs> I just want to make sure we, we, we catch up. So you said it was crap and then you said, but it's good about getting that first draft out. Is that right? A lot, a lot of writers uh, are able to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's something that I actually try to do. I am, I've been practicing, um, just writing faster drafts and then going back and and spending more time on it rather than trying to have this perfect thing when I when I finish but because I feel like and, and not like not trying to be mean or anything but like honestly like uh, when you when you write what you're what you're doing are you thinking if somebody's gonna read this and I don't want it to, to represent me and make me look ridiculous because when I write stuff, I'm like, I don't. I hope everybody reads this and knows that I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Um, and it's, I'm really not. Um, I don't have a lot of personal attachment to to my writing anymore. Um, after, like, I mean, the querying process kind of kills that in you. And that 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 initial um, edit that I had to do on my first novel, where I had to go through it and just like ruthlessly cut words. Yeah. Um, that was a really, um, that was an extremely emotional process for me because I had invested so much in, in these ideas and, um, and getting rid of it felt like it did, it felt per, like a personal loss. I mean, you kind of romanticize all of these scenes that, that you're cutting out, um, and everything that you get rid of, you, you think that it's, you know, you know, how are people going to understand this story without, uh, without all these details and whatever. But, um, I, I realized in in doing that, that a lot of the information that I was putting in there um, wasn't necessary to the reader. And if you try to control too much of what the what the reader is experiencing, you take away their ability to kind of bring themselves into the story and to add those yeah. details for themselves. And so I, I, it became almost cathartic to go through and cut cut everything down as as much as possible and just leave the basic stuff there and then you know leave room for the reader to come in and, and bring a part of themselves to the story too um and so when i when i write now a lot of it's it's not that i'm worried about what people are going to think about it um but i want to make sure that i'm leaving the right clues to to guide them so that um, the overall conclusion is maybe where I want them to be, but that I leave enough space for them to fill in the blanks in their own way. Um, so you just want I, to be as concise as possible with your message. Yeah, so without. it's kind of, I mean, it is, it's a... I mean, it is an art form, I guess, but it's, it's really like the process itself is very... Um, it's like building something, like you want to make sure that all your structure is there. It's just my method. It's different for everybody. I mean, we yeah, all... it's, and and I've but I've never been like I. It doesn't bother me at all when people read something and are like, well, you know, this sucks. I didn't get this, this and whatever. Garbage. Like it doesn't. And I'm like, oh, well, that didn't work. All right, I'll try something else next time. But it, because I'm now, I'm producing so much more, whether it's short stories or whatever. You don't have time to get emotionally invested in in one particular story because by the time you're getting feedback on that, you're already working on on something new. So it doesn't. And the, you're learning just through the process of writing, not so much from hearing that other people think your work sucks. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's always been a question that I've, I've wondered, though, because um, I've had people look at me like, you know, and I'll have 30,000 words in, a, in like five or six days. And they're like, 
what the hell are you doing? Like, why, you know, <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm just writing. Yeah. And I, like, I, I'll have it. I'll set, set a timer for like 30 minutes and I'll just write for that 30 minutes and I'll get like a thousand words in or whatever. And people were like, are you just writing nonsense? And of course, the question is, yes, but at the same <laughs> time, it's like, it's like, it's, aren't we all writing some form of nonsense? And the whole thing for me is it's it's really like that stream of consciousness, that flow that we get into. I don't know if you've ever read the book um, Fearlessly Writing. No. Um, it's oh, uh, or fearless, fearless Writing, sorry, by William Knower. Um, it's a good book. Okay. Yeah, he talks about he talks about flow a lot. Not the not the progressive saleswoman, but the the state of being like in touch with the universe or whatever it is can you know the um, the creativity all around us and uh, I think that's do you ever feel like you get into a state where you're just like you you look up and you're like I can't believe I just wrote all that I don't I don't You've do never that been there? no I know and I and I would like to but I think I, I never really go for that like that stream of consciousness consciousness kind of thing. I always I always have um, I guess a motive a little bit. You seem very rigid. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> no, I know, but I I, don't I am. It's free I mean it's freezing cold up there. I'd be rigid too. I'd be <laughs> it's like what are you supposed to do? It's it's an interesting I, I mean i wish sometimes i'd had more of that like let's slow down and like be more precise about what the heck i'm talking about but when yeah when you're in the flow it feels it, it's a it's a weird state to be in yeah i i know it's one of those things i've always i've always it's like meditating though see i can't i don't meditate and i can't really? i can't just let my brain go it's uh, probably something that i need to learn how to do but i had a great conversation yesterday with an author about meditation um and how it's really just like how we just have to learn how to sit still and not let the thoughts that are like ravaging our mind force us to move and like your face doesn't itch that bad yeah. you know like just relax for a second as soon as you said that i was like oh my face is itchy ah, God, <laughs> i must scratch everything but yeah it's it's kind of just like being okay within that being in that moment it's a I talk to a lot of people about meditation because it's something that I do on a on a daily basis for <clears throat> personal reasons and stuff too. And it's uh, I, every morning, like when I write my blog, it's right after I get done meditating, and it's that kind of I don't know the flow of nonsense that just is ready to come pouring out of me. It's really cool. But so, how long have you been? How long have you been writing for? Your whole life, or oh, God, my whole life, yeah. I started this book that that is actually published. It took me about ten years to actually write. By the time I started with the the concept and um, and to when it was actually finished, but um, but the majority of that was just like piddling around here and here and there, and it never really turned into anything. And then um, my my husband uh, convinced me to to quit my job and take a year off and just write it and um that was nice and then, of him. <laughs> yeah oh incredibly nice of him he also saved my manuscript i i i deleted all evidence of this of this manuscript at one point because i was like this is never going to happen i'm just wasting time blah 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 and i got rid of it and uh he saved a copy of it without telling me <laughs> and then when oh, uh gosh. when it was time to him. actually do this yeah he was like well you know here's your files and um and I kind of just felt like, okay, you know, if he, if he can have that much faith in me, I need to, um, well, yeah, do I sat down and I, did you, what'd you do, what'd you do to celebrate when you finally got your acceptance letter from the publishing company? <laughs> uh, nothing. My, my twins were six months old and I was just like, so relieved to have that part finished. I kind of, uh, <laughs> stopped, just stopped thinking about it and started doing the mom thing. Really? That's super boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really, I was really have you, tired. Have you had it? I know raising kids is so tough. Um, being a mom, I should say, I'm sure is extremely tough. Being a dad is super easy. This, 
Um, have you and you haven't had a chance to like celebrate that success since? I mean, you you were published in 2014. Like, you have yeah, to celebrate. Then I, you know, the next <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't really feel like you know. The first time that I really held that I held my book and it was like this is mine. Uh, that was that was a really cool moment. But uh, I kind of just feel like now that's done. I've got to move on to the next thing and. I think when book two is out, I'll move on to the next thing. And there's no like end goal, really. It's right. Just, it's all part of the process. It's just keep on freaking writing. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you go to the bookstore at all and like take a picture of yourself next to the book? I did. Yeah. I, well, I, I didn't. I don't know if I took a picture of me next to it, but I took a picture of my book on the shelf. Yeah. See, that was that was it for me. And. <laughs> That was the coolest thing. Now I put I put the book there. Like I put my own book there. They didn't. The bookstore had no idea. <laughs> I um because we're I'm in Canada and my uh, my publisher doesn't have Canadian distribution rights. So um, to get it in bookstores here, I have to do it on a consignment basis, which means uh -huh. I actually go and sign myself up as a, like a local writer and there's a special place in the store that it goes in but I did actually have them in, in a few bookstores locally That's I, I didn't know you could do that yeah how do you go about doing that did, is it just go, Canada? well I don't know like you can do it I did it at chapters and it tempters indigo here um do you guys I don't know if you even have that it's basically I like think, okay um, but yeah, like they usually have, um, a manager who's in charge of like local interest. And then, uh, you can, if you talk to the, them, there's, uh, they do it on a consignment basis. So you give them like five or 10 copies of your book and they put them on the shelf. And then after a year or two, they let you know whether or not they're selling and whether or not they want to keep you there. Oh, very cool. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk to you about, because uh, like I said before, we're we're blog friends, and um, you you write a lot of like competition, like story, short stories. Yes. Right. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, two years. I only really started writing short stories about two years ago, and um, since then it's actually become my preferred uh, writing form. It's actually hard for me to go back to novel writing now that I've kind of. Uh, gotten into the short story groove but um and I think it's been incredibly helpful just for the quality of my writing um it's it's really really difficult to create a full story and get all of like everything that you want in there um within such a limited uh word count like when I first started it was impossible for me to write a story that was like 2,500 words that I thought that was impossible and uh, now kind of my comfort zone is like a thousand words 1,500 words the real flash fiction um I do pretty well with so yeah because it's like a lot of compressing and like yeah, it's very hard. clear with the story arc right yeah so it's been a great exercise for you have you won any competitions I haven't won any yet um but uh I have I've placed fairly well in my uh, in my initial heats for like I've done the um New York City Midnight does a uh, flash fiction and short story um, competition. And um, I mean, it's over 5,000 people in there worldwide. So it's pretty stiff competition once you get into the uh, the upper levels. But I've scored well, like like you know, first, second, third place in um, my initial heats um, for... In your age range? No, it's not my age. It's... Uh, you just you can be the nine-year-old division. <laughs> put into groups and then you get an, a, a like genre character theme assignment that everybody does and uh, then there's like you do that once and then if you are in the top three you move on to the next round and then if you're in the top one or two then you move on to the next round and slowly start uh, getting eliminated that way so I've never I've never made it all the way to the end but I've done well well that's cool yeah and you just got to keep trying right I mean it, yeah. you, you only get better and better and I've read yeah. some of the stuff. It's, it's, it's of, fun. the draw with what your assignment is. Sometimes yeah. you get like I got comedy, which is not something that I write at all. And I ended up scoring really well in my initial heat. And then I got romantic comedy, and it was so <laughs> that was the end of that. Yeah, both both those things are like I have no idea. I have no funny bone, and I'm not romantic at all. No, I am terrible. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't I don't know where that came from. Anyway, um so your blog, what's the name of your blog? Sarah does sci fi, but it's just scjensen.com. Scjensen.com? Yeah. Okay. Um I wanna ask you this too, because I ask everybody this. In terms of legacy, what do you what kind of legacy are you trying to leave with your writing? Do you want do you want any kind of hitting are you trying to influence people's minds? <laughs> no, not not actually. Subliminally. Um, I think in terms of legacy, I mean, once I'm dead, I'm not going to care. Um, I don't know. But I, for me, it's kind of just about participating in a conversation now while I'm here. Um, I studied English literature in, in university, and um, I think there's just something about... Um, participating in this the human experience and adding your voice to the you know millions of other voices that have come come before and seeing how um as different uh as we are and as different all the different ways that we that we express ourselves um how we're often trying to say the same things and um i don't know to me it's just interesting to be a part of all of that power of storytelling i guess yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It is nice to kind of add your voice to the chorus of other ones. It's like when we um, when we play our chord or our note, we sing with our voice. It's like we get to jump in the melody. You yeah, know, we're not sitting in the pews anymore, watching the watching the play go on. Yeah, well, and it's just you kind of feel feel a little bit less alone in the world when you're. Um, when there's people reading what you're writing and, and responding to it. And uh, hopefully, you know, somebody else reads it and feels that maybe their, their experience has been reflected in what you've written. And, and I think that, I mean, it's a simple thing, but it, it can be very powerful. So, you know, that's interesting. It just made me think of this, uh, this idea of like what we bring to the table, like what we bring to the world, what we contribute to the world, because uh, for, for myself, I, I spent a lot of years very selfish and like taking as much as possible. And, now I haven't ever been happier in my entire life, and it has to do with uh, part of that happiness is like is is from writing, but I didn't even think about it in terms of like being able to contribute something to the entire voice or like you know meaning of of human existence. Uh, I just wasn't thinking on that level, but it, it's interesting that you brought that up. So uh, great job! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for inspiring me. No, that's great. No, I mean, honestly, that's it's something uh, I feel like it's uh, I just had a profound thought. <laughs> Mark it on the calendar. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it was it. It was it was interesting, though, because I'm in the program. I've told you this. I'm in a recovery program and it's about what I can bring to a situation. Not what can I can take from a situation anymore? And writing has been that for me. And it sounds like it's um, what it is for you, too. It's what you can contribute to the world. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, for, for me, um, writing is, uh, I mean, it's really an exercise in empathy, right? You're, even though they're, they're characters that you are creating, I think there's something about being able to get into somebody else's head and viewing the world um, through their eyes. And uh, hopefully, like if, you, if you're writing well, uh, being able to make your readers empathize with, with surprising characters, whether it's somebody that you wouldn't normally um, care about or you wouldn't normally like. If you, can, if you can somehow portray a character like that to somebody in a way that makes them actually care about them um, and at least understand why they are the way that they are, I think, um, you know, I think it's really important to be able to do that as a writer and as a, as a reader. Um, I think that's why in a lot of ways, I think that's why we read, um, to get out of ourselves and to um, experience life as somebody else for, for a little while, right? Well, yeah. I mean, we want to feel like, uh, we want to know what is gonna what's going to happen uh, after the world ends, <laughs> like in a post-apocalypse. I want to I go through that. Fire and brimstone. <laughs> it's what? Fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone, yeah. We're preparing ourselves yeah, in all these different ways. Uh, very cool. Well, SC, I'm so glad we had this time to talk. 
<laughs> the second time around. Hopefully there's something from the first one that you can uh, use as well. Well, there's, yeah, there's f five different videos that I'm going to have to edit together. So I don't know when the hell your video is going to be up. <laughs> Sometime next year. It's all good. Exactly. Maybe yeah, by no. then both will be ready and I'll be uh, doing another round of pub, uh, marketing. <laughs> and maybe I can write a song for it. <laughs> Please don't. I might anyway. <laughs> Can you not like leave out that weird rooster noise? Don't don't do that. The rooster's the best part. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> the rooster's where it's at. That rooster's gonna make me famous. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Virtual handshake. Oh, I need my other hand. Great. Great interviewing. Thank you for joining <laughs> Uniweb, Produ <laughs> Uniweb Productions. Where all people become one people. SC Jensen, don't freeze to death. I and will try. Get back to uh, reading and watching all of my content. <laughs> I'll try. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Yo, let me ask you a question. You like this video? Huh? Huh? You like it? Was it good? Was it good? If you did like it, uh, please subscribe. Thanks.